gospel passage last night. I thought it might be a good thing to preach on the question of faith. For you see, Christ addresses that very issue to his disciples and tells them how strong one's faith must be. And as I continued reading, I came to the end of the gospel passage. And it brings up the issues of fasting and prayer, the two wonderful and great disciplines in the church. And I thought I might preach on that, especially during these days dedicated to the Theotokos, days of fasting and increased prayer. And then I read the epistle reading once more, as I hope that you read it this morning as it was read in the church, or if not, you will gaze at it while you go home, because it brings into mind two important issues. The first one when St. Paul says that we are a spectacle to the world. And I thought I might prince, preach about being a spectacle to the world as a Christian, because the world and its ways do not understand what it means to be a Christian. When we bow our head in prayer at times in the lunchroom as children, or when we sit around the dinner table in a restaurant and we join hands in prayer, we become a spectacle, but yet a witness to the truth and the meaning of Christianity. And I chose not to preach on that, but I want to share some thoughts on the very last lines of the epistle which you heard this morning. Which in which St. Paul says that I became your father through the gospel. And I ask you, therefore, to be imitators of me. St. Paul closes this passage this morning with those lines. He talks to a community and to a people who have some challenges, some issues even with the faith, and how to live, and how to worship. And St. Paul reminds the people, the community, the church, that he became their father, just as we as clergy become your fathers through the gospel. And he continues by saying, be imitators of me. But you have to keep that in mind in context with the teaching of St. Paul in a complete way and in a whole manner. He says, become imitators of me because I am an imitator of Christ. If you read St. Simeon, the great liturgist, not the theologian, St. Simeon of Thessaloniki, he tells us why the vigil lamps burn in front of the icons of the saints. And he reminds us that the vigil lamps which burn in front of the icons of the Virgin and the saints of the church are because they look at the light of that vigil lamp and the light is Christ. The vigil lamp and the light and its meaning are not really about the saints, they're about Christ. And St. Paul, in saying, imitate me, says the very same thing, imitate Christ. Be like that saint who looks to the vigil lamp, that saint which looks to the light which is Christ. I often remind students and people when they look at the icons that you will notice that on many of them their ears are not covered. And of course their eyes are open while their mouths are closed. 
And the saints remind us that they had nothing to say because the essence and the meaning of the gospel and truth come from Jesus Christ. They look to him and they listen to his word. And we are called to be their imitators, to look at Christ and to listen to his word and to say nothing. After all, we as people, we as the children of God, we as the community, have nothing to say of importance when it comes to the church. I might remind you jokingly when someone said to me, do you want to know what I think? And I said, no. The church has the truth, and we've had it for 2,000 years. Now why do we need your opinion? It's not necessary for us to voice our opinions or our thoughts. It's necessary only to be obedient and to be imitators of Christ himself. And what does it mean to be an imitator of Christ? First and foremost, it means humility. If you read the other passages of St. Paul, he speaks of the divine kenosis, the emptying out of himself from the heavens to come to the earth. Christ humbled himself. He took on human form, leaving the abundance of grace to come and to reside amongst us. God so loved the world that in the person of Christ, he came to be here. He took on human flesh while it wasn't necessary. And he did so because of his humility and because of his love for the world. To imitate Christ means to always forgive. To forgive each and every one. Because none of us is perfect. None of us can cast that first stone. We have to listen to the teachings of the church and to Christ who forgave each and every individual even as he was on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He looked down from that cross and with love he asked for forgiveness for those people. And to be a true imitator of Christ is to forgive, to join that with humility, and then to be embraced and to give love to the world. We know that God so loved the world that he gave his son that we might have life. And Christ, when he came into the world, said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Let your love be embracing and let your love be whole. Let your love be true and let your love be complete. And as Shakespeare says in one of his sonnets, that love is not love which alters when it alteration finds. Love never changes. It remains constant, it's true. Read the 13th chapter of St. Paul's famous epistle to the Corinthians. Love does not fail and it doesn't fade away. Love doesn't disappear. Love only gives continuously. It's that spring of water which is overflowing and washes away our sin. And that is what we are called to do, as St. Paul reminds us in the epistle today, when he says, be imitators of me. And that's because he became an imitator of Christ. It's not easy, it's a challenging thing. It's very difficult and perhaps the most difficult thing in our days and times. Not only to be called a Christian, but more importantly, to live as a Christian. When you go home, think about these simple thoughts. 
in these days when we are still celebrating the Transfiguration. Let us all ascend Mount Tabor and be transfigured and changed. Let us put away the old person and take on the new. To be rebaptized, if I might use that expression, in Jesus Christ and in his love, so that we may celebrate the great feast of the Pascha of the summer, the Dormition, the Chemises of the most holy Theotokos. And let us be obedient to the message of Christ, not only as St. Paul and all the saints, but even as the Virgin Mary was herself, beginning with the words, let it be according to your will, and let all things be done according to the will of God. Amen.